before. We always talk about the Europeans. There were some people that came before Columbus. Who were they? Yeah, it was the Vikings and okay. Norsemen, the Scandinavians, and not the ones from Minnesota. Okay, the people from Sweden, Norway, Finland. Um, but they came. They came about 1000 AD. Now, some of you know of Leif Erikson, and he made an exploration, went and found this beautiful green island, had all kinds of volcanic activity. They were able to, and this island, even though it's, it's cold in the winter, they're able to use these hot water streams, put them underneath it, their, their floors, and heat it up. Now, we in Florida would consider Iceland a very nice place in the winter, but if you are from Finland, or Norway, or Sweden, it's actually a pretty nice place. So why did he name it Iceland? So uh, yeah, yeah, you could yeah keep the people away. away. Figured, I mean, Iceland doesn't sound real good. So he kind of just told his friends the people he wanted. Then the son of Eric the Red, Leif Erikson, explores even further um, and goes, and he finds an area that he needs to set up a trading post that they were exploring for further, but they cannot really, it's not a good, very good place. So he has to get people, what does he name that place? Greenland. At Greenland which people got there and found is not very green. But they explore further, they get to Newfoundland, what is today part of Canada. We do know they're there. They are there for 10, 15, maybe up to almost 20 years. We know that they either went back or were killed off by the Indians. Um, we know they had conflict with the Indians because archaeologists have found skulls that have been bashed open and where spears have gone through bodies. Things like that were the broken bones. So they know that that doesn't happen just for funsies. Uh, so this is where, where we have. So yes. Yes, they were there. There were all these rumors about it beforehand. A lot of people didn't know it. A lot of people thought, ah, oh, it's just a bunch of Swedish or Finnish guys. After they drank too much vodka, they're talking about Thor and these Vikings. <laughs> But it did actually happen. But why is trivial, but why does it really not matter compared to Columbus? Because the Vikings did. weren't really powerful. No, it has nothing to do with power. They it's were it's powerful. Did you Columbus like, mapped it and brought it out? Columbus sort of. Well, it's not, it's not, it's not even that land. Is it because like, Columbus made like a connection between like the New World and the uh, well, they made a connection, but there's something that then after that. They weren't influential. And this is where I kind of get in that way, where I keep telling you, change over time, change over time. This is trivial. It happened. Did the Vikings come and make a change over time and change history? No. No, no. no it happened. Uh, it went away. After Columbus came, did it make a change over time? All right, and that is why you kind of look at this where, yes, you can know trivia, and that's one thing that I keep on with you all for your SFIs, where you have to look at things and say, yeah, you can identify it, but where is it important? Where does it make that change over time? All right, so before we get to the Spanish, we have the Portuguese, Prince Henry the Navigator. He doesn't really navigate, he doesn't really explore anything, but he actually makes a big influence because he starts a school. He brings the people to the school, and he brings in both your really smart people and your hardworking people. Sometimes for engineers, they're really smart. They know what to do, but they're not very practical. So he brings in engineers and boat builders with fishermen. Would fishermen know what needs to be done to make the boats better when it comes to sea? Yeah. So they help and design and make better, which that's what those caravels that we had in the last section come about. He brings in all these cardiographers, map makers, put their maps together, because what did the map maker do when they didn't know what was past the next bend? Yeah, somebody else knew. But what if they can't find anybody else that knew? They, 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 they just kind of drew what they ocean. figured. Ocean. Yeah, they drew a sea serpent or a monster. Don't go there. So that's why he brought these map makers. Let's try to get these maps. Let's figure out and put all these things together. And what he does is he sets the blueprint for more people to go. Now what Portugal will do, and this is where it doesn't have as much for the American side, they will explore trying to get to what Marco Polo wrote about and go around Africa. Now, kind of for the Americas, again for the United States it doesn't matter, the Pope later on when the Spanish were coming was afraid that his two most powerful countries in Portugal and Spain would fight each other. 
So he separated the world, he drew a line in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and said everything to the east of it belongs to Portugal of the new lands, everything to the west belongs to Spain. Now, I know for some of you arrived the question, uh, well first of all, why would the Pope do this? Yeah, his, his two most powerful, does he want the two richest nations that he had fighting each other? No. That'll hurt. So that's why I did, and trying to be in a peacemaker of it. But this, I say, what's the problem with this? Besides some of you saying, well, you know, since the world's round, if you keep going west, you have everything. If you keep going east, you have everything. What's another problem with the ha that he had that you maybe see on that map with this treaty of what is Spain's silver? got a lot more. Portugal got. Oh. Well, yeah. In Africa, they actually Portugal would have more of Asia too. Which Brazil's is, cut in half. Yeah, this is where they kind of looked at things, and this is where we always have this image of North America and South America being right. If we were to go directly south, we would hit the very, very edge of South America. And so, when the Pope drew the line in the middle of the North Atlantic, when they extended down, this part of South America belonged to Portugal. What country is this today? Brazil. Yes, Brazil. What's the language of Brazil? Portuguese. What's the language of almost all of the rest of South America? Spanish. All right, there's a little sliver of English and French where they had little colonies, but for the most part, and that's why Brazil is different than the rest um, of, of South America. All right, 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. He changes history. Here is something from world history that you should have had pounded in your head over and over again the Colombian exchange. But for all of you that your mind's leaving before the weekend, here's where to make it simple. New things and new places. Um, and this is where we will have some new things that are influential that will come to the new world, some to the old world. And this is where, where we have this trading, but again, something that, that is new. What crop is most associated with Ireland? Potatoes. Yeah, potatoes. 600 years ago, were there potatoes in Ireland? No. No, because they were from South America. But afterwards, they found that they grew really good in Ireland until, of course, they had this fungus come about and they had a little problem with it. Um, and so you have this transfer. So you kind of see here cows, onions, bananas, and things that come to, to the, the new world. You see turkey, tobacco. Um, sweet potatoes coming over to Europe. All right, the most obvious that we have that a lot of people think of is the horse and how much the horse influences with our Native Americans, especially out west um, there, which there were not horses before the Spanish. Well, actually, there were over 10,000 years, but they became extinct, but then they were brought back. Now, coming here to Florida, what are our two biggest agricultural products that we have in Florida today that were not here before Columbus? Oranges. Oranges, Oranges citrus. Yeah. What else? Bananas. Sugar cane. Not sugar cane. Strawberry. Watermelon. Corn. No. Back to the Chicken. Oh, cows. Uh, yeah. Cows. Wait. Oh, cows. <laughs> oh. Chick. Uh, I. Yeah, are you about to say Chick Fil A? Chick Fil A <laughs> came from Europe. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> If, we, if you came to Florida before the Spanish arrived, there was no citrus, there were no cows. Those of you that are hog hunters, you wouldn't be hunting anything because there weren't hogs. And the way that the Spanish raised both actually their cattle and their hogs were to release them, let them go out in the wild, and then you would come after them. Um, this is where for Florida, we would we will have for centuries after that, it's almost like the old Texas cow drives to go where the cattle were wild. It was not until 1950 that we had a fencing laws that said that cows had to be in fences. Before the 1950s, if you hit a cow on the road, you had to go pay the farmer for the damage you, you did to his cow. Not he had to pay you for the damage he did to your vehicle. Yeah, Lydia? I was gonna say, is the cows and oranges were like the new world that question? Well, they were from the old world and they came to the new world. Oh. So that is where, and that's what the Colombian exchange is about. Um, and I will tell you, one of the things always gets a mistake in this, this unit. The Colombian exchange and mercantilism are not the same thing. Uh, but this is where before Columbus and after Columbus, things came. Now, one of the things that came both ways, but what was more deadly coming from the old world to the new world, disease. Yeah, diseases. And again, once again, that's a reoccurring theme. Yeah? 
Out of all the things that we gave the Native Americans, they only gave us one disease. Well, one well, major disease. They had, yeah, and this is where, and, that's, and the reason being for yeah. that is the Black Plague had made made the Europeans, their immune system so strong we need another uh, that they had. All right, the Spanish and Americans. When you think of the conquistadors and the, the name symbol, they are in search, and the reason why they explore is for the three Gs. What is the number one reason they come? Gold. Gold. No, 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 officially, what is the number one reason? God. Their number one reason is for God because they need to spread Christianity. That's the number two reason officially. Glory. Okay, glory. <laughs> glory. They want to glorify their king and their country. And officially, what's the last reason? Gold. Gold. Yes. Okay. Now, realistically, what is the number one reason the conquistadors came? Gold. Yeah, gold. Right. <laughs> All right. Then after that, uh, yeah, the God of glory stuff. But for most of them, they're coming for the gold. Uh, Okay. Kind of story real quick with Cortez. I know this is world history again, but the part is is the repeating themes for it. The, when Cortez and his soldiers landed, and when he met with the Aztecs, the Aztecs thought he was a god. Why did they think that some little white dude is a god? Because he he's white. Because he's white. I hear a whole lot of answers, and actually, almost all of those are correct. The stories that they had was that their god was going to come back riding the clouds, was going to be light-skinned, would be shining, would be able to tame beasts that were unknown, would control thunder and lightning. Now, the guns came from the direction, first of all, riding the clouds. Came from the sails. Not by horses, the sails. As the sails came over the horizon, then the beast, Horses. horses. The horses. Thunder and lightning. Guns. Guns, cannons that, that they had. So this fit their story. Cortez took advantage of this um, when they thought he was a god. And, and it's like, oh, this is good. Montezuma, the king of the Aztecs, came and wanted to praise his god and make his god happy. So much that he even gave his own daughter for Cortez to have as, she, as he willed. Uh, but they also brought him what was the richest of the Aztecs and for Indians to show how rich you were. They brought him all these things of flowers. Now, how do flowers show that you're rich? Or no. No, the flower. How do flowers show that you're rich? They're pretty. They're pretty. <laughs> if you're able to glow be basically where you don't have to grow food and you have extra land to grow flowers, are you pretty well off? Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of what they yeah. looked at. Really screwed but but when they brought these <laughs> flowers to Cortez, he didn't notice the flowers. He noticed what they were brought in, which were made of gold and silver. And if you want to please your God, you better bring me more of that. Not the flowers, the gold and the silver. Eventually, the Aztecs would find, figure out these are not gods, these are evil people. But by the time they figure it out and they assemble an army to fight a much smaller Spanish army, the Spanish secret weapon has taken effect. Disease. And that's where the sneeze. Diseases will end up. It isn't guns, because the guns at that time were not that effective there. It wasn't the horse, although those would definitely help militarily. But it was disease, because by that time, diseases were spreading with the... Aztecs, and when they assemble an army together in a giant camp, guess how fast they those spread diseases it. spread then? So that is where. And this is where the important thing of this from world history is the idea of this is the repeating theme. What happens after Native Americans come in contact with any European group? They die. Okay, they end up basically, not all die, but a large percentage of them will end up dying. Was it? There. Usually within 20 years, some of them were higher, but usually on average between 80 and 90 percent. All right, for our Spanish people, Maria, how how can I say this with the right accent? That sounds so much better than what I'd even attempt. Give it a shot. Um, I can totally see it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, but now, for this, this is where we have for the American history the influence. This income in, in this since the summer was <laughs> now and I would be recording. Uh, they set up what would be like a feudal system, which will become like the plantations. The thing about it with these feudal systems that they have, they need people to work on it. The first people they come to 
and force them to work yes. are the Indians. And what a lot of these plantations in the Caribbean were were for sugar cane. What was wrong with the Indians being their labor? There was a lot of them they they die. Yeah, a lot of them die, and they were e it's easy for them to escape. Because if you were in Cuba, if you escaped, could you live off the land a little bit easier than some other people and find other places to hide? So what did they replace the Native Americans with when they when the Indians did not provide the land? And that's where the Africans would be then be brought. And slavery would be introduced in there. So um, with it. So what I say was the problem with the Native Americans, again, they're escaping, they're dying, and the solution was with slavery. Which this is where the things kind of tie in together from what we had on the last section. Remember the tribes on the coast of Africa now are taking over the tribes on the interior. The English or the, the Europeans have got a lot of these people there. They're addicted to alcohol, particularly rum. So they go to these tribes, you want to want some rum, you want some alcohol? Well here. We'll trade you and they get the slaves. Um, and that's what brings over. Um, as much as slavery comes into the US history, there were, home, there were probably close to 10 times the amount of slaves that would be sent to the Caribbean and South America than what would come to the American colonies. So it is a huge part of all of the, the history of the Americas, not just the United States of America. All right, the Spanish in Florida. Most of you know Ponce de Leon. He was coming to the island of Florida, which, anyone know what Florida means, was what he was looking for, what it means? Land of flowers. Land of flowers. Oh. What it, when the Indians told of the land of flowers, they were talking about a land of riches. He was looking for the town of Jesus. All right, I know y'all been talking about it, but we'll come to that in a second. First of all, though, uh, <laughs> but when he is told of this land of riches, he's not thinking flowers. He's thinking gold, silver. He wants to get like Cortez has got, where where we we have several other Spanish. He wants to be that. He is the governor of what today would be Puerto Rico, um, and he wants to become one of the, the large ones. So he arrives, and yes, there is flowers, and when he arrives on Easter morning, the flowers are blooming. Uh, and he comes skipping up and down the coast of Florida looking for things, and there was a gold. Now, there is some truth about he was searching for a fountain of youth. But do you really spend a huge amount of money on an expedition for this story that there is some water that, that is going to make you be immortal? No. Okay. I mean, if you're looking for gold and you happen to find that, that's a good sign. But it was. But it makes for a better story of looking for the fountain of youth. But he is looking for gold and riches. And how much gold do we have here in Florida? We have tons of school. Well, there's some areas, Jupiter Island, Miami Beach. There's a lot of gold in some of those places. But it's not there naturally. There's a lot in the city. What happened on the second trip? All right, his second trip. Okay. Uh, which, on his second trip when he will come, he, he will arrive, as soon as he arrives just south of where Fort Myers is, the Calusa Indians attack his group. Um, uh, Ponce de Leon will have an arrow go into his Achilles, which you would think that would not be a mortal wound, but at that time period, it does. He dies soon after he gets back to Puerto Rico. Why were the Indians so mad to see him a second time? His first trip, after he left, a lot of people died, and they knew, all right, something's wrong with these white people. We don't want them around um, in the clue spot. All right, quick story with some of the other ones. Here's where we have some stories. This is not really with the world history, but when we're here, and some of this is local. Um, Pela de Narvez will land in what is, and this is where I'll come to some of these, um, and he will end up landing in the Tampa Bay area. He is quickly attacked by the Indians with his small group. They jump back on the ships, and unfortunately, they end up, some of them end up landing near Pensacola, but most of them get into a hurricane. A lot of them end up dying. But two of his soldiers were captured before they could get back on, and then they are made prisoners of war. And I'll come back to these two later on. What? Soon after, we will have Hernando de Soto. Look, that is 12 years later. Hernando de Soto will land in Tampa Bay with a huge army. The Indians there know that they can't defeat him. He is looking for gold. Is there gold in Tampa Bay? No. 
So he marches north from there. When he arrives to what today would be Land of Lakes, about what, 60 miles or so um, south of here. When he arrives in that area, comes across this Indian tribe, this guy comes running out to him and speaking to him in Spanish. And this is a guy by the name of Juan Ortez. And Juan Ortez's story is that he was one of those two people that was captured. He was to be put to death, but the chief's daughter pleaded to save his life. Pocahontas. There's the story of Pocahontas. It actually occurred here. It's not where we get to John Smith and that. I was Pocahontas. lied to. Juan Ortez, which we know yeah. this story because he will continue to be with shame. Land of the Soto, and the Soto has a historian writing things down. Um, there, I believe Juan Ortez dies before they get there. Not many of them survive. Yeah, Maria. He, wait, did you say the, the one? He was. Um, he was originally here. Twelve years later, when the Soto came across, that's when they found him. Wait, was he with the Ponce or Ponce Leon? He was with. Um, <laughs> yes, okay. the second one. Right. <laughs> He's not with Ponce de Leon. So Juan is Juan Smith. No. This, Juan Ortez would be where the English story of Pocahontas pretty much was taken from Juan Ortez. He would, yeah, he would be John Smith in that story. John Smith would know of Pocahontas, but the English would take this story and make it their own. Maybe a little bit them. If you want, we can edit it out. Well, it, this is where, for historians, do you, if you're English, do you want the hero to be Spanish? I'll be the same. No. So you switch the story around. All right, last little bit here for Hernando de Soto. We know he came very close to here. In fact, he was, actually, the direction I'm facing right now, he would have traveled within two miles of here in this direction. That is so cool. How do we know? And if any of you across the street from the fairgrounds, there's a historical sign. How do we know that he came through here? He brought cooter turtle. No, he's not bringing us our turtles. No, I have no, 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 no. Can we dig up some dead guys in a swamp? Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> Glenn, I don't think I did that with you, bud. They had a person that was writing, and as they were writing, they, they talked about in different areas when they came on a ridge and a whole series of lakes, the Tassa Pocket Chain. Not too long after that, they would come. They would cross a muddy river, and very soon after that, they came to a very clear river. Well, Western River, River is about 30 miles the north Rainbow here. River. The Rainbow River. Rainbow they River. camped right at the headwaters of the of Rainbow River, where Rainbow River State Park is. They would then travel north about where Perry is, cross over, go pretty much up to where Tallahassee is, loop around the southeast, come down, he get to the Mississippi River. When he got to the Mississippi River, um, the Indians there had never seen him. They thought he was a god. They were extremely cruel to him there, and Hernandez de Soto dies. How does God die? No. No. And so he's come back to life. But so the soldiers that were with him and the soda that had been really cruel to those Indians realized we got to get out of here. They actually sunk his body into the Mississippi River and tried to get away. And they got to where they were hoping to and eventually got to what would be Mexico City. By the time they got there, there was only a couple dozen of the original hundreds of those soldiers that got there. But one of them was a historian that wrote and told us all about that. Uh, by the way, when they got here for the Indians that were here, since he was looking for gold, they, when they were trying to describe and say what they were looking for, that's why they said to go to the Ocali tribe, Kingdom of the Sun. What color is the sun? Gold, yellow. So that's why when they were describing it, so that the Ocali tribe, um, I'm the only basketball players in here, are, Y'all, you the one big, the big tournament in Ocala is the Kingdom of the Sun tournament that actually goes with their history. Uh, there. Same as the Kingdom of the Sun. As the Kingdom of the Sun. Let me get that for you, man. Right, and then, so that's where some of that history goes. All right, Saint Augustine, the Spanish establish it. Why did the Spanish establish Saint Augustine? Mm -hmm. Why did they want Florida? Because they like flow riders. Is there anything they really want out of Florida that they had at that time? They just knew Disney World was coming someday, right? <laughs> and let me see. We got to move here. What would happen? What goes along the east coast of Florida? Water. Harbor. And in that water, there is <coughs> the Gulf Stream. Dang it, man. As if you 
are going to Europe and you are in a sailing ship, would it be nice to find a current that is traveling a couple miles per hour faster than the rest of the water to help you get to Europe faster? So the Spanish ships hauling what? Gold. Gold and silver from Mexico and South America. We're traveling up the east coast of Florida and then the Gulf Stream turns and starts to go up throughout the Atlantic. So at St. Augustine, they could put a base there to make sure that pirates don't sit close to the shore and they basically made sure they were protecting their gold and silver, which for our hunters today, for thanks, that's why we look for when some of the Spanish ships crashed, especially down in the Keys during hurricanes or they got off track and, and went into the reefs. They really didn't hear a whole lot about Florida except for that. Um, in St. Augustine, the French would actually arrive um, and they, they would actually take, take out the, the French out a little bit because the French were being pirates. Now, why would they start our second city, Pensacola? Pensacola was actually started before, before St. Augustine. What? Anyone know who was settling down the Mississippi River? Yeah, the French. So they put Pensacola they, to make sure that the French didn't come any further in this direction. Now, St. Augustine's our oldest city in the United States. Technically, again, you could argue Pensacola. But the problem was Pensacola, they had it for a little bit, then they abandoned it for a while, then they came back. So Pensacola was not permanent. But for trivia's sake, St. Augustine is the oldest city in what is the United States that has been continuously inhabited, at least by Europeans. Um, they established, you see all these red dots on here, a whole bunch of missions after the English started settling here because they didn't want the English to come down, take over St. Augustine, and have a place to attack their ships, border ships that across the Atlantic. So what did the Spanish want us for? Well, not gold, but uh, protect their gold, and basically military reasons. All they wanted us for was military base. Uh, and here's a map of Florida. You kind of see where Minnesota went. Lost the on the second trip. Um, that we have to look, and you look and see right through here for DeSoto, where he comes up and do citrus I feel famous now. West. Santa Fe. Yes, same Santa Fe is there. Will be the capital of what they called New Mexico. The thing is, not very many Spanish moved to this, the area. If we look at what is today, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada. Is there much of a reason to go there for natural resources. Yeah, desert. Now later on, silver would be found in Nevada. And actually, they didn't know the gold was in California, and that's part of it. Except for California, that very good agricultural land. Yeah. Except for California. Arizona, New Mexico, big, right? So that's why you kind of look at the Spanish, there wasn't a whole lot. So they, they established some of the areas, but for the most part, there weren't many Spanish that went there. Um, from Friday, why did the Spanish, Spanish establish the towns in Florida? All right, why, why, why for all of this, going back to that for Friday, whether it be St. Augustine, Pensacola, or where they had a whole bunch of little missions around, what are they worried about? The French. Yeah, yeah the, the French, French and then the missions would be there once the English started settling. But it was actually the French. They didn't want the French stealing their gold and silver that's coming up the, up the, the Gulf Stream um, there. So it's... Pretty much, Florida was a military institution to protect what they have. Um, and the Spanish in 250 years did hardly anything to, to make Florida better. We will find that English take over, and in 20 years, the English do more than what the Spanish did um, in 250 years. All right, out west, one thing that we have, we'll find that the Spanish are very harsh to the Native Americans that are out there. And we will have, and, I, and the reason why I point this one out that, and there, and I don't have every single Indian War because we could spend the entire semester on Indian Wars, but we'll have the Pueblo Re uh, Rebellion, which was started and led by the Indian leader, Pope. Now, what happens with this is, and which it happens over and over again, whether we're talking about the Spanish or the English or the Americans later on, Pope would lead, they would then defeat the Spanish. What did the Spanish then do? Send more. Yeah, send more. And send the bigger army, and ultimately this is where, and this is again, it's a repeating history that we will have, English will go with it, and then the, the Americans too. Um, and, but this kind of shows that for the Indians, and even though the Spanish tried to do some things to Christianize them, um, 
it was one of those things that what if they didn't want to be Christian? What Christian thing did the Spanish do to them? Kill them. Yeah, kill them. Okay, so this is where, where you look. And the Spanish were, were not known to be the nicest to them um, in here. Now, California. California has a string of missions that are kind of famous in there. The reason why the Spanish started to establish them is because the Russians were coming from the north where they owned Alaska and were starting to come down the coast and claim it. So California was kind of like how, how the Spanish had Florida. It was supposed to be pretty much a buffer and a military outpost to protect Mexico from, in this case, the Russians, where Florida was originally against the French and then, then the English. Um, yeah. All right, the French. Now, in Florida, we will have a very short time in Jacksonville, a small Huguenot colony, but it will be quickly defeated by Pedro Melendez. For most of the French in North America, though, they will settle in what today is Canada, especially along the St. Lawrence <coughs> Seaway, and down the Mississippi River. Some of you that know your, your Catholic universities, Marquette, LaSalle, Joliet, all right, a lot of our Catholic universities we have in America today are named after the French explorers that came through here. But this graph kind of tells one thing that is, is a big difference that we will have. Even though the French have a lot more area, this graph kind of gives representation of the population. The English have a small area along the coast. The French have that big area, but who has more people? English. Yeah, the English. Um, and that will later on play into why the English will end up taking over there. But for the French, how did they make their money? What was it? What? The furs. Yeah, the furs. And one thing about the furs, where did they get the furs from? Canada. Yeah, the Indians. And in Canada, but also, here. if you're trading with the Indians, and that's your main source of income, what's your relationship going to be with them? Yeah, it was very cordial, very nice. And not only was it a nice trading relationship because you have been making money off of them, but the French will actually even allow, in the very beginning, intermarrying between the French and the Indians. Pretty much seeing them almost as equal. Where the, where the English, that yeah, there was some, but not a whole lot that took place of that. For the Spanish, for the people that were ruling, it wasn't um, really allowed. So this is where you will have this on it. And I had this question, how was their treatment of Native Americans different from other Europeans? They were, when we kind of break it and make it simple, they had the best relationship and their treatment with the other Native Americans. And again, it comes down to their trading at first and the relationship that they had. Now, for the impact later on, guess which side most of the Native Americans fought on when the French and British will fight each other? Yeah, most of them come to the French side then because of that. Not all, there were a few um, that the British are able to get, but most of them are there. All right, now we get to the Dutch. Remember, Netherlands was one of the top five. The Dutch, what they established in the area that today would be part of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, but mainly New York, they will establish trading communities. They are called patroons. That's an SFI you've got to know. When you see that, you're thinking of Dutch. All right, you're thinking of the Netherlands, and you got to think of that. That's a trading line. Their biggest trading platoon that they set up was this place called New Amsterdam. It was at the mouth of the Hudson River. What city is that today? New York. Yeah, it's New York City, but New Amsterdam would be. They called their area New Netherlands, okay, original name there, um, with it. Again, that is now New York. The reason why it's called New York is the British would take over it, and the general that was in charge of the, the British army that defeated the, the Dutch was De James, the Duke of York. So when he won, he renamed it after his home that he was from, which was in York, England. So that's British why it's York called people. New York. New Amsterdam becomes New York City on um, there. Port Orange becomes Albany, the capital and state of New York. Um, and this is where we will have, I have on here many financial ideas start there. That is where Wall Street actually starts, where they are starting to trade with it. Um, today we do it by decimals, but until about 15 years ago when you traded stocks, it was that you would actually, when you bought shares of stocks, it would, it would be either an eighth, a quarter, 
All right, and as a fraction. And the reason why they did that is, and this goes to the, to the background of the Spanish with the pieces of eight of gold. The reason why they're pieces of eight, you could break up the coins into eight different pieces like a pie as parts of a coin. And when they bought and sold stocks, you, it might be three and an eighth. Um, today, again, we kind of gone for decimals because that makes it a lot easier to, to go with things instead of because for you all thinking an eighth, oh my, that's, that's too much math, okay? And how many eighths go into three quarters and all that. Um, but this were for the Dutch. For a short time, they were pretty powerful, but they are taking over by the English in there. Um, I have the question, how was the treatment of the Native Americans by the Dutch? Nice. No, not so nice. It really wasn't that nice. And even though one of the things they did trade for was furs, here's where they did not think of them as equals. One of the famous stories, right here, again, stand in the back here. I'm going to drift off again here. All right. I don't want you to be like last Thursday when you were barely alive. Uh, but this is where we, we have for, for one of the famous stories. The Indians bought Manhattan, or the, sorry, the Dutch bought Manhattan Island from the Indians for $24 in trinkets. Like, trinkets are little toys and mirrors and stuff like that. So we have a box of little toys here. Can you give us Manhattan Island? Which you probably can't even buy too many ham a hamburger or anything for $24 on Manhattan today. Uh, but this is where, now, one thing you have to kind of look at this. What was the idea of land ownership for Native Americans? Who owned the land? Nobody. Yeah, nobody. nobody. Right, it belonged to the Great Spirit. And as humans, you are put on Earth to take care of the Great Spirit. And you are not to abuse what the Great Spirit has. So when Europeans came, and this is going to be something that happens over and over again, and they say, well, here, we're going to buy this from you. Did they understand buying land? They thought of it, hey, you gave us, look at all these nice little things. Oh, I got a mirror. So, but then what would happen when the Indians would come back to an area that the English, Dutch, Swedish, thought that they had bought from them? What did the, the English do when they came back on the land that way? You sold this to us. I killed them all. Yeah, and this is where we'll have our conflicts. And this is Native Americans didn't have this same idea along the way. Now we come to the greatest group of all, the Swedish, and the great impact that they had on America, even though they're only here for a few decades. <laughs> that. But the Swedish, now it was Finnish also, but hey, we don't want, that's like your ugly cousin, you ignore them. But for the, for the Swedish, they come to America, settle a very small area on what would be New Jersey. But they bring with them something that is seen as very American, the log cabin. Um, when we watch an American story of us along the way, I, um, somewhere along the line, I know they used this phrase that the log cabin was like the first mobile home for Americans. Um, anyone know what they're thinking of there? They could take a fire tree, tree wherever you go. Okay. Well, it's a log cabin. And look at this. Is that a great home? No, not really. But yeah. is it a home? Yeah. Is it yours? Yeah. And this is where kind of. We we'll kind of go back and what is the American dream? For many people, it's the American dream to have their own home. Mm -hmm. And this is part of what you would have. Would you rather own your own home, whether it be a mobile home, a log cabin, than have to pay a landlord and own someone else? And this is why it's kind of seen as this is a, it might be a stepping stone for some people. It might be, I mean, for one, but at least it's yours. It's not someone else's um, here that we have. And is it something that is quick and a little bit easier to make? Now, the reason for the Swedish that they had this is the, uh, the, the British, when they came over, and I'll come back to you all in a second here. The British, when they built their house, they would put a frame, they would put this like cloth, and then they would make this plaster and this mud, which looks nicer, but when it was cold, these logs, and it's like Lincoln Logs, where you can go, and I, I could go with you all, we could go out to the state forest, and we could build a log cabin. It may not be that great, good good trip. but we could. Um, no. Let's do it. How much would you, all, would you all want you to be hauling logs around? We can call it new steps, Mr. But you put it together like Lincoln Logs, you put mud in the cracks. 
um, where some of them, because it won't fit flat, although you try to shape it to make it as flat, there's some that you won't have in there. But if it was cold, like our great winter freeze that we had last week, that one day when it got below 32, um, <laughs> but when it's cold, well, those logs provide more insulation than basically a woven thing with some mud plaster on the side of it. Yeah. In America, whether it be today or especially 400 years ago, did we have a lot of logs? Yeah. So it was readily available. You could build this faster in an Akshadi. It was better than most of what the British were making because normal people couldn't have a stone cutter come in and build them a nice stone house. Um, so that is where it does make it, and what is seen as an American idea for the log cabin is brought by the Swedish. But the Swedish were quickly taken over by the Dutch, and the Dutch were taken over by the English. But we do have that background. All right, what was your question? Or wait, wait. So whenever the English came over and stuff, they weren't making the log houses, they were just using like the tents? No, well, in or the like beginning, okay, but yeah. What you would do, you would actually take, think of like long, I call it the broom sage, and you kind of weave it together to make some sort of cloth. And then you mix together almost like a cement plaster that, that you would put on the outside on there because you would build the frames on the show. So it looked, maybe looked better, but it actually wasn't as good as even a log cabin. And a log cabin was made right. You pick the straight trees. Right, and there's certain things you must do. The ones that are a little bit bigger are lower, and as you kind of get a little smaller, when you go up. Uh, the hardest thing to build for a log cabin is the roof. But what's the hardest thing to build on other houses? So I mean, still took took the engineering there. Um, it wasn't really that bad, but they were such a small group that it made a huge difference. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a long term impact. Um, and part of that, again, we don't know what if more of them would come. The relationship then turn that. But there was, again, a small enough group of Swedish and Finnish people that came. So uh, that's why, yeah, they're there. And no, I'm not just doing the Swedish because I'm Swedish. It actually, the log cabin is the main thing that you have. Sweet. 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 Sorry, you're not the first one to say that today. Yeah. Yeah. All right, this map is kind of showing when we get to a point basically in the mid 1600s where you have the British along the seaboard but you have the Dutch kind of breaking them up but what happens to the Dutch? Yeah, they're taken over by the British. Meanwhile, we have the Spanish in Florida, the Spanish out west, mixed settlement because it's some Spanish, a little bit of French, some Russian that are coming there. And then you look at this area, Indian Reserve. So we left something for the Indians but did everybody really think they should deserve all this land? No. So guess where we're going to have a war over later on in history? That area. That area. The French and Indian War will be over that area as the French and the British are claiming that. All right, early British explorers. So now we get to the, to the early part here. Sir Francis Drake in English history and lore. Oh, what a great guy. He's a pirate. Queen Elizabeth makes him, knights him as a sir because she keeps bring, uh, he keeps bringing her gold and silver. Where does he get the gold and silver from? The other yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Spanish. Spanish. He's, he is robbing the Spanish ships out of the sea and then coming back to the English and then basically Queen Elizabeth let him hide out of the ships there. Eventually the Spanish would not be real happy with that um, there. I'll come back to them. But then we have John Cabot. Um, early on for the English looking for the Northwest Passage. The Northwest Passage is this mythical water route over, over what today would be the top of Canada that connects the Atlantic Ocean with the Pacific Ocean. Why do I keep saying mythical? Well, there's water there. Why can't you get through it? It's all ice. It's all ice. Except for, it maybe isn't mythical. We have actually had some ships. Now that can go across the Northwest Passage. Now. Now we can. And this is where, as the Arctic, at certain times in the summer, has become basically in some of those areas that you have up, and it has become so thin and enough that the ice has been melted away uh, there. But not quite for a normal ship to go through it yet. Now, the Spanish Armada. 
The Spanish got ticked off at what the English were doing. 1588, they sent the greatest navy in the history of the world to go crush the English. And the English win. How did the English defeat the mighty Spanish Armada? Natural disaster. A natural disaster, what you say? Faster ships? No. Although there was actually, you are right for some things. The first part of it they did when the, the Spanish first came and they weren't in a true formation because they took the English too lightly. They were able to bring up actually not even true ships and come up and shoot. So the Spanish regrouped, but when they regrouped, that is where there was a natural disaster and it destroys part of the Spanish Armada. So the Armada goes back to, to Spain to kind of regroup and rebuild, but it saves the English, but it does give the English a time then uh, in history to not be crushed by them and they will then start their exploration. It actually started a little before that with the first group they have. Our first English colony is at Roanoke. Now here's where it's more interesting trivia. They do not have a lasting impact on history. This is all trivia, but sometimes for some of you to know the history of it. Um, Roanoke is basically on the coast, real close to Virginia, North Carolina border is on an island. It is nicknamed the Lost Colony. We have found where it was now, but no. it was founded in 1587. When was the Spanish Armada defeated? 15. 1588, so a year later, but that comes into it. The first explorers came, they dropped off a group of people. They went back to England to get supplies. When they got back to England, they weren't allowed to leave because that ship was recruited to fight the Spanish Armada. After the Armada was defeated, they come back and found an empty village. Uh, now, before they left, we do have one piece of trivia that you have, and here is trivia upon trivia. The first English woman that was born, the first English baby was born, Virginia Dare. Did she die? Virginia Dare. Born Dare. Now, first of all, the name Virginia, which the colony of Virginia made, made. anyone know where that name comes from? Virginia Dare. She's even in. Queen Elizabeth. Oh, yeah. the, Virgin Queen. the Virgin Queen. So that is why, where she was known as the Virgin Queen, that is where Virginia is named after and the first English born person. Again, that is trivia. Uh, but with what would happen to it, when the ships got back to where Roanoke was, the village was empty. We have carved into a tree. See, they took that picture of at that time. Um, <laughs> kept it on their phone. Uh, but they had carved into a tree and carved above one of the doorposts the word Croatan. C-R-O-T-A-N. When they got there, they knew it was an Indian tribe. Now the question is, did they go and peacefully live with those Indian tribes, or did that Indian tribe attack them? They ate them. <laughs> so you kind of you don't know what it is, but they didn't stick around because a storm was coming up and what would actually today we would know would be like a hurricane was about to approach. They knew with the signs of it. Their ship was basically up into this, not a safe harbor, but harbor. Uh, have you ever seen things, pictures after a hurricane where ships have been thrown up on the shoreline? If you are at that time and your only way back to England is that ship, you go and ride out the storm. You go out to the ocean and yes, there are big waves, but you ride it out because that is your only way back. Otherwise, you're not a ship builder. You can't build a ship good enough to go. So they said, we hope they're with those Indians and they left and never came back. And we don't know whatever happened to them. That's why they are the lost colony. That's crazy. Yeah. So was Virginia Dare like fully English? Honestly? Yeah, she was fully English. And I, don't, I really don't know what happened to her. I think she ended up disappearing with all the rest of them. But before she, before that is when they came. Like, she was there any instances Englishmen. of English settlers finding uh, Indians with like blue eyes and stuff? And there was, and this is where for some things, and this is where for English fishermen for a while kept on, were, were fishing, and they would do trading along the coast. So it could be. Do you think there oh, might have been some okay. contact there? And this is <laughs> or you could go for different okay. languages or dip some religion and ideas that did all other things. You can go with aliens, but let's not go there. <laughs> so it's Croatan, Croatan, whatever, is that like the name of the tribe? It's the name of the tribe, it's the only clue that we have. Okay. And the whole scheme of things, do they really matter? Yes. What did that tribe do? They made the first 
baby. <laughs> yeah, what did that mean? Fertile thing? Yeah. <laughs> Said all of that is trivia, it makes for a nice story, so sometimes here. But now we have the not, the first one was the one that made the last thing impressed, though. Right, and that's where this will come in. Alright, Virginia Company, London Company. Today we would call this a corporation. In those days they were called a joint stock company. People would would get it, would basically invest in the company. The idea is to make money, and as it makes money, you get the more that you own of the company, you get dividends back. So they they invested in this company, people went off and they were trying to make money, and what were they looking for? Gold. Yeah, gold. Some of you know that great historical movie made by Disney called Pocahontas. <laughs> and people got off the ship and sung as they would dig. Because you know, if you spend hours and hours digging, it makes you want to sing and dance with your shovel. But, but that is where they're looking for gold. Except for, did they find gold in Virginia? No. No, they kept looking. And that part of Pocahontas is true. They kept looking for it. Meanwhile, there was this guy by the name of John Smith who was exploring the area, trying to find if their area that they needed to prospect. He quickly figured out there's not gold, but he came into a relation with the Disney by the name of Powhatan, who was the head of the Powhatan tribe. And he was then able to work out deals and trade with them for stuff like that they needed, such as food. Now, he did probably sometime meet his daughter, who was what? Famous person. Pocahontas. Wait, wait, wait. That Pocahontas, of course. John She's Smith dead. is Pocahontas. She's not dead. No, it's not his dad. I'm so confused. Powhatan is Pocahontas' dad. Now, uh, we do not know, we do not know if, and we don't even know for sure if John Smith actually met Pocahontas or that. His relationship was with her dad. But, you remember the story of Juan Ortez. The English then later on will make that story of Juan Ortez. Now that is true, which this part is actually in Pocahontas 2. All right, yes, there is a Pocahontas 2 over straight to video. And Pocahontas yeah, will be important. But for the original Pocahontas, Disney had to fudge a little bit on this because Pocahontas would probably have been not even quite 10 years old and John Smith closer to 30. All right, you don't make those type of movies. Um, plus, they were true. Did they ever kiss? I mean, yeah. No. The second movie. The second movie, it's not John, it's not John Smith. It's John Roll. It's John Roll. And that's where it will be different. Which, John Smith does get hurt. He leaves. Now, for those of you that are saying, wait, there's got to be a love story. John Smith will come back and explore up and down the North American coast and never come back and see Pocahontas. So, <laughs> that's what he was looking, he was looking for. Meanwhile, in Jamestown, they will have the starving time, which they have a hard time surviving without the food. Um, John Smith was their main connection, and the Indians by now are figuring out that they are dying a lot. There's something wrong with these English. Whenever the English came out of their fort, they would attack them. The fort was not made in a very good place. It was strategically made so in case the Spanish come, if you see it, it is kind of shaped like a triangle where you could put your cannons to shoot a Spanish ship and the Spanish ship had to come in one direction. Problem is, the fort's pretty much made in a swamp, and, which meant the water they drink, were drinking was not very good, which helped make even more diseases that they have um, on there. But the, the, um, over two, three quarters of those English would die. Finally, a ship would come with more survi survivors. And there, but one person that was, not surprised, but people to help him out, was this guy by the name of John Rawl. And he would have with him seeds of something the Spanish were hiding, and it would be known as the brown gold, and would give something that the Virginia Company, or London Company, um, would be able to use. What was brown gold that made money for the it is tobacco. Thank you. Usually we have someone yell marijuana, but no, it is tobacco. <laughs> what? What was from? And the Virginia Company would make some money for a while, but eventually the Virginia Company would become bankrupt. Uh, by the way, John Rolfe will marry Pocahontas, and it sounds like a nice story. She is kind of seen as a princess, is brought over to London. She is not dressed 
as Disney would dress her. She actually dressed in um, Elizabethan type attire, but she will catch disease and die in London. I know in the movie she climbs a steeple and sings on the top of the steeple. And then she runs. Yeah, that is. And that is the real story is after she marries John Rolfe, not John Smith. I told you STD was going on. <laughs> John Smith, pretty much he helped get food um, for Jamestown and helped them out for a little bit, but then he gets injured and leaves. And when he's gone, he's not there. So and the, the whole scheme of things, John Smith isn't long term, as if not very important. John Rolfe is. Did Pocahontas take another Indian with her to London? I don't know. Was he really tall and maybe awesome? <laughs> <laughs> Was he like a brain? Here's what we have one other word that you need to know. The Virginia Company would eventually go bankrupt. And then Virginia would then become a royal colony. What does that mean? Okay, what is a royal colony? A colony owned by the British. Owned by the king or queen. It is owned by royalty. By the way, with the names. Jamestown is named after King James. And for those of you that know with religion, the King James Bible, and this is after the back and forth for Protestant Catholicism, he wants to make sure that the English, with the Anglican Church, they have a Bible in English where the Catholic Church used the Latin Bible. So that is why we have the King James Version of the Bible where he had people then go and make it into. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, you need some place to put it. Uh, although the Virginia Company failed, how did it change the fortune? Okay. What did they bring? Or what, did, what was brought there? Tobacco. Tobacco. And here's where you kind of look long term. Guess what?